I'm Didi from Visionary. Uh, this is our uh, Visionary Talks audio podcast. Visionary Talks is a format that is meaning two things and many more probably. But one of them is talks between visionaries. And this is how we imagine the audio format will be. Here with me is Ricardo Matlacas, who is um, our guest, artist, performer uh, in public space. Hello, everyone. My name is Ricardo Matlacas, and uh, it's my pleasure to uh, be invited uh, here for the visionary talks. Uh, it feels nice and flowing all the time. So thank you, Didi. Uh, to give some uh, background story, um, last year, I think it was in November, um, my partner and visionary and life, Yuan, also artistic director of uh, Visionary, were discussing the artistic program for uh, 2022. And um, one of the names that came out in our brainstorming was this of Matlakas. Uh, we really like uh, his uh, strong visual language and um, we find important the art we present from Visionary to be related to socially important topics. And this is what really caught me when I saw the portfolio of uh, Ricardo. So uh, we figured that it would be really good if we invite him in Bulgaria. And uh, we're happy to uh, have the support of uh, the National Culture Fund in Bulgaria to um, allow us invite Ricardo and also the support of the Italian Cultural Institute. Uh, so this is a privilege to uh, host you in Bulgaria. And uh, maybe you share, how do you feel so far? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I feel great. And I'll tell you more in, uh, in a sec. Uh, but it was very interesting how we actually are connected because Johan Jawan uh, in street art came to this uh, uh, graffiti festival, mural festival. Pompeii Street Pompeii. Festival. And uh, yeah, I got to know him and, you know, he was like a street artist invited there and stuff. And then it's very interesting because Johan one day called me and invited me basically here with you. And it's very interesting because from a street artist to recognize performance as a form of street art, because my, my performance is like street art, but instead of putting colors on a wall, I, I perform, I use my body as a tool and... I guess Johan and you recognized this particular quality in, uh, in my actions uh, because you do work making the world better. You, you do work to make people open up in different ways, not just in one way. And I like that you decided to expand your program with performance art. Mm -hmm. About my feeling... Uh, uh, it takes me always a bit of time to to uh, feel the essence of places. Uh, but I already now feel, after a few days, I already feel like uh, I'm, I'm already more part of it. It took me really just very little time. Also because yesterday I performed. Yeah, this is your uh, second day in Bulgaria. You yeah. arrive on the 20th, now is the 22nd. So this is a very uh, short period with a quite intense program we created for you. <laughs> yes, uh, it, it, it was tough to perform just uh, when I arrived for me, as I told you uh, earlier, because for me, before I perform, I need to connect but during the performance, I, I did that work and it was very tough. Yeah. It was tough but useful. Today, I feel like I'm new. I'm, I'm new and part of this place. L little by little, you're getting part of but because the of Bulgarian yesterday, reality. Yeah, but because of yesterday, more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somehow 
today I woke up more Bulgarian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's give a little bit more context. And I really want to share, as you mentioned, the way we're connected, because in the world we live, it's very important the people you surround yourself with and how do you relate with them. I personally find this very important in terms of the creation process on one hand and on the other, the result. Mm. Because if we're not happy with the process or the result, like why we do that? So um, uh, Visionary <coughs> began as something like a side job, like something we were doing, um, you know, in between other things we we're working on. But uh, now is our fifth year. And I'm happy to say that right now this is more like a full-time, not job, it's full-time Life. Yeah, <laughs> full time life. Yeah, <laughs> and it, and it does give pleasure to be surrounded with creative people, like really visionaries who envision the world in a new perspective and have a clear mind of what they do, how they can provoke the audience, and give them something to think about. So. In this matter, uh, we were discussing a lot the direction of which visionary show go. And uh, we have a strong background in street art, mural art, and these are uh, media of art that are speaking loudly on certain, you know, publicly related topics, but also art in public space is your performances, for example. They're also part of this subculture of mm -hmm. the street art thing. They're yeah. just like another way of expressing, another way of provoking. Yes, I, I think it's street art, also performance made in public spaces. As a, as a originally, I was a street I began as a street artist and then my street art that I still do, in different ways, but also the performance art, which for me is street art. What is interesting about performance art in the public spaces and what really means to me is that I will open a little crack in people's mind that will spread light. We are in Easter now. Is it Easter? Imagine an Easter egg. Uh, imagine there is a, it's full of light. And you crack it and this light go out. Mm -hmm. So much light. It can go very far, like a laser. Uh, it's like that. People have an egg, egg brain. I crack the egg brain and then wow, it goes to the creation of God, universe. So people connect to the universe. I help, help them to plug to this universe, which they are unplugged. Okay, I'm talking very abstract, but it's like that. That's why I work. That's why I perform for that little crack. Crack their head in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> All the abstract, I find it very relevant yeah. to the, you know, to the situation because you know, we we speak about the matrix for like decades already, but like we created it like so strong wrapped around us. So we really need these cracks to start like breaking through like different dimensions, different uh, storylines and oh. start creating a different future because I think that mm. we need to open up open. until we are liberated from our thoughts, from our brain, from our limitation because we are limited, unlimited. That's what we had to work on. And what I like about the network and connection is that I'm not the artist. The role is a role we have to play in life. But we are one. We are one thing. We are the same. We attract each other because we need to do some bigger work that is bigger than me and you. That's why I'm here. That's why you are here. That's why you invite me here. That's why we are all here because we are this big body that needs to help human consciousness to grow. That's the whole point. Otherwise, there's no point. So if I perform and performance goes well, usually goes well, because our energy is in that. 
But if there is something that don't go well, it means that there is some energy that we didn't Doubt. take care of. We need to take care. Care is the key of the world. Care for each other, care for connection, care for everything. It's not about me, it's not about you, it's not about anyone. It's about everyone. Yes, it's mm. beyond our ego and our mind. So. Yeah, existence. Existence. Mm. Wow, I really got the goosebumps though. Me too, because <laughs> we, it's truth. Mm -hmm. uh, we can only talk about this when we trust each other. Otherwise, this doesn't come out. This can only come out when we trust each other. Trust is important. Thank you. Thank you for those words. And this is exactly the way me and Yuan felt during the process of uh, conversations because uh, we invited you in January. No, actually it was in, de in December after we got the <laughs> approval of the funding from National Culture Fund. And yeah, we had multiple video talks uh, and I really like the way you... Um, You believe in us, you trust our opinion, uh, you ask for it. And this is a, a definitely a process of conversation. So uh, because, you know, we, we loved your portfolio, we saw something in it, but we didn't know what you will perform in Bulgaria and what's the program like. So we created it together and it, yes. was, a, it was based on multiple conversations. Yes, So that's why I say role is important, but role is just a play, a game in the life. But, but uh, we all create what we create together. Yeah, I mean the artist, but that's the, the role I play in the game. Mm -hmm. You are the organizer, the visionary, you, that's your role you play. And but but it's only when we play together, when we that, reach the... the reach. The actual point. For, for me, it's very important that we're going to reach the three performance together because it's last, because it's our end work together for now. So it's very important that we keep discussing that. Yeah. To make it successful, not for us, but for the people to get it. Yes. To understand it, to take it in. Preparing the program, we wanted to give you more context about what's happening in Bulgaria. What's the reality here? Because this is your first time visiting Bulgaria and performing as Matlakas. So it was important to relate your type of art with what's going on here so it could be meaningful for the audience like it, you actually gave us a, a couple of ideas like uh, I remember you sent us a couple of other performances to discuss mm -hmm. but maybe it wasn't the right thing that was fitting well in our context and there we came up with the idea of doing melting borders. This is one of your really strong performances that you've done in multiple countries around the world where they have political matter to fight on, <laughs> let's say. And uh, here the Bulgarian context is uh, going around the, the so-called Macedonian question. So the... A Republic of North Macedonia wants to enter the European Union, but there are some questions that must be decided before that with Bulgaria and Greece. And here it comes in place, the whole concept of your performance. So let's melt those borders because especially in this region, and not only, like yeah. all the regions around the world, you played this performance. Yeah. It has this meaning, but like we are here like society that is very close to one another in terms of traditions, of background, and those lands are so close by mm, the other, and the borders are uh, meaning of the, the political country, and the flags are also a political mean, so the performance is melting those flags, right? Yes, it's a very, this is a very fragile topic, because Many people tell me, we need borders. Okay, you are right. Maybe we need. But at what level and at what extent we need borders? So the question starts from before 
um, because for me, culture in general, habits of people in different countries, way they like things, you know, it's great. My point is about the not recognizing the human uh, state of being of other countries. Many people, like for example, if you have a war, you kill, and on the other side you have family, they lose their child. And you are happy, you have victory. But what is victory? Because if they do the same to your side, then it's the same thing. That's what I talk about. It's, it's the same. It's a, we are all human. So that's why I'm abstracting flags. Not because I think, oh, let's open up. Maybe it's impossible for human being to do that. But it's important that I spiritually do that because how the world and society is constructed is not fitting our human um, state of being. We are different. We are not that. We are not this. I don't know if I'm clear. We are all one. And killing the, the opposite size child is killing your own child. Yes. And the child, adult, and it's not just about killing, it's the hating, is the hating the what is different when many anthropologists or people that have a certain feeling for the difference, they love it. Why not loving something different instead of hating it? In some countries, it's like that. Sometimes it's just a matter of xenophobic uh, feeling, like you don't know what it is, you have a fear of... The... Then when they get to know each other, they start seeing similarities. I don't know if I'm going a little bit out of topic, but I wanted to mention that some people, uh, I heard that... Uh, Uh, they are against what I do because they say that we need borders. I understand what they mean because they, are, they have fear. They have fear of occupation, they have fear of violence, uh, so they want to protect. I understand. I understand also why you have to raise a flag when your country is attacked. It's some part of your identity, so you want to yeah. stand with your identity and, you know say who you are. This is how people relate. But I also think this is something that came from outside us. Yeah. So something that is not like within us to stand with. It's not the flag. It should be something else. Exactly. But then mm. uh, the result of your performance is the shirt you're wearing. Yes. So you're deconstructing all the flags which are represented in the colors of the ice cream that yes. are on top of your head. And then, you know, people are used to raise a flag. So you give them another type of flag, which is the abstract flag. It's the abstract flag. It's a deconstructed flag, colorful flag. It's, it's a like, new piece of art. It's a new piece of art. It's like a painting, abstract painting. Actually, as a painter too, abstract art is, uh, is not easy to reach. You only reach it when you become like master, when you, when you really understand the essence of things. So that's what I'm talking about. The essence of a flag, essence of a culture is the human being with their habits and different habits. And that's the beauty of it. That's why I want to create new new abstract flag and sometimes I melt several countries together in one shirt so, so which is uh, what we did what we did so we uh, melt like we I say yeah we <laughs> but it's, it's we. yeah you just really give me this yeah. uh, sense of being co-creator together with yes, you so thank you about this and um, we melted the Bulgarian flag the flag of Greece the flag of uh Republic of North Macedonia and the flag of the European Union. So these are the five colors represented in the ice cream cones that you wore during the performance. And the call towards the audience is let's melt those borders. We don't need them. We're all one. We have the same culture. We have the same traditions. We're so close together. Why? Yeah. Why don't use the abstract flag? Yeah, and anyway, if we don't melt the borders, uh, uh, the ecology disaster will melt the world. So <laughs> let's speed up with the consciousness open, openness and, you know, and then we can take care of the planet in a better way instead of wasting in, in weapons, money and hatred. 
Yes. Yeah. And uh, another thing we were talking on the side before the show was that art is really a tool for people to open their minds and maybe a flag that is type of art, like the abstract painting is a tool, like it's more like a direct call to the people. See, like the relation art is opening up your mind. So use the art flag instead of the one that is with the uh, straight lines, with the very uh, specific colors. Yeah, because you can't read it. Mm -hmm. You won't memorize it if it's abstract. Mm -hmm. You won't memorize every detail. Or maybe you do, depends on how abstract it is. But if it's fully abstract, will you remember? <laughs> you re will you remember? Maybe. Yes, I do remember my shirt. So, but that's also dangerous to give another icon. Mm. That's not my aim. Of course, I have a leftover shirt, which is a symbol and it's there. But it's more, my, my point is, is a little bit more light than what it appears because this also risks to become a new kind of flag. Mm -hmm. No, we don't even want that. But yeah, uh, anyway, I'm creating the, uh, the uh, sweet flags. Ah, by the way, they are called the sweet flags. Yeah, the sweet flag. Because they are made by ice cream. Ice cream is loved all around the world and almost it doesn't have a country where it comes from. Like, it's really universal. It's... it's Yeah, but uh, uh, most of the people consider Italy to be the mother country of ice cream, is okay. which is funny because you're Italian I and don't you eat don't ice eat cream. Ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> ice cream. And also Italian, you know, they they see they say they invent everything. <laughs> Pizza isn't Egyptian. <laughs> I don't know. I, I you know they just put mozzarella on top and they said it's mine. I don't know because things come from everywhere. Things are influence of everywhere. Italian, okay, you made gelato, you yeah, you call it gelato and it's called gelato. Okay, let's say that, that, but let's say it's made in Italy, but it became so international that uh, it's, uh, it's most loved all around the world. And that's why I wanted to use that and do the sweet flag. About where it comes from, you say Italy, okay, let's say that, but I'm sure they had some influence from some Pakistani or some African man who came there, gave a cube of ice with, and they say, ah, we made jalap. Because they, people, that's what they do. They appropriate other things to them. I, I did it. It's influence. We are one thing. We are talking about one. It's influence. We get influenced by things. And then we start them and, uh, you know, I don't know. But, anyway. Yeah, but however, uh, the point was that you <laughs> not eating ice cream decides to use it as a tool of art, yeah. which I really didn't get until the time of uh, mixing the color with the vanilla ice cream because this is the base, vanilla ice cream. Yes. Simply white. And then I see you bringing white color to put in the white ice cream. And I was like, why you do that? And then like when we, like, you started mixing the colors, it really turned into a totally different thing. It wasn't ice cream anymore for me. Like it does look different in structure a little bit. Yeah. This is what we were talking. But also when we started like putting it on top of your head and then it started melting, like it had a totally different feeling. Yeah, some people say it's paint. It's very interesting. I say, man, paint uh, melts, <laughs> it dries. Uh, yeah. yeah, but it's true. I mean, um, when you put the color, uh, it really becomes like a, a thing. Uh, you, you don't want to eat it. But anyway, you don't want to eat ice cream. It's milk and sugar. <laughs> That's my point also. Uh, as a performance artist, I don't like using food in my work as I don't like using plastic in my work. You won't see plastic. Even like, sometimes they have to cover the floor. You know, the first thing they say is plastic, but if I can avoid it, mm -hmm. if you make dirty, they want plastic. If I can avoid it, I always r try. Plastic and food, I try to avoid, but for me, ice cream is not food. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so that's why I allow myself to do it. I rather waste it on my head than eat it. Uh, uh, I'm joking a little bit, but uh, yeah, I don't consider ice cream to be uh, good for for consumption. 
So how you came up with this idea? You mentioned uh, we were yesterday in uh, Bulgarian National Radio, Radio Sofia. So you mentioned that it all came in the dream. Yes, it was half. It was I was sleeping and then I I was half asleep at some point. Then woke up like really, boom, like at uh, 90 degree. Like I was vertical all of a sudden <laughs> and went to to put it on my sketchbook. I slept straight away and the day after it was this. Wow. And I saw it, I'm like, great, I like it. And this was uh, maybe the second time that I came f through half awake sleep kind of thing. That's why it's important to, to relax because relax sometimes, uh, it doesn't mean sleeping. But it allows you to you connect down, with your and you fall, uh, inner self. Yeah, and you you get drowsy, maybe sleepy, but actually that daydreaming is mm -hmm. a daydreaming thing. It can really bring you far. It's important to do nothing. It doesn't mean to do nothing. To do nothing means maybe to relax and daydream, but daydream is actually very important. That's why maybe performance art is important to give and any art to give a, an information, visual information for people to start daydreaming mm -hmm. or to have a conversation. That conversation is the artwork itself because art is care. Art is care for, is care for the person who is perceiving it. It's for their imagination to grow mm -hmm. because if their imagination can grow, their life can grow. Their life can develop. They can become bet better. The word that came up into my mind is curiosity. Mm. And yesterday we were in Blagojevgrad. We chose to perform there because it's a town full with young people, students from the both universities, the American University in Bulgaria, the Southwestern University. And they perceived the performance in a really interesting way to me. They, some of them were curious They were standing on the side. They actually, you know, approached me asking, what is it about? And I saw that people do, they are open to hear and to understand. The moment I was really touched, like that was literally then, it was a, a woman, maybe the age of my mom. And like when I told her the whole concept about melting borders, be one, Uh, live in peace and love and she just came to me and hugged me like this was so warm hug I received like this never happened to me before in our years of experience doing art and public space this was very touching but as you said that's great to hear when uh, you create a mural People come and bring you presents, little things. It's sort of... S sort of their way of saying thank you. Yeah, thank you because they love it. They, because their imagination is expanding. Yeah, because they, they got the crack, yeah. but they liked it. <laughs> they, they like it. They want more hammer on their yeah. head. <laughs> That's very good. So next thing in your program that is uh, the exhibition opening in Galeria de Po mm. on the 27th of April, which is next uh, Wednesday from now. And we decided to come up with uh, an exhibition so we can create a space for you to present your art to the Bulgarian artist scene, to the Bulgarian audience, to be something different rather than just, you know, do the PowerPoint and say, I did this and that, blah, blah, but more or less to really show them what we've done yesterday in Bulgograd, or what you've done in the other countries, Armenia, South Korea, Ukraine, Italy, Palestine, all those years of performing melting borders. So we can deliver the essence of this performance to the audience in Sofia. That's good. Uh, I like the concept of public and private because I perform in public spaces and uh, as you say, now we are bringing it in a private space. So it's like all sorts of audience. You have educated, art-educated people who come to the gallery and see this and get informed. But on the village, on the city, on the town, when I perform, is people who don't have idea of what I'm doing. I might be an actor, I might be someone who asks for money, 
And they say, no, it can't be crazy because this is too prepared. <laughs> can't ask money because it's so all dirty of, and it's not with his hand out. What does he want? He's not really doing a show. He's just walking around. What does he want? That question is important. And their conversation with other people, friends, or in their head is what matters to me. They get to some explanation, even if they don't have... Luckily, I had you there and Johan and Michaela to explain maybe and to say a few words, which is good. But also if they make their own thing, already it's opening up. Important is step by step. I'm not an atomic bomb. I'm very little human being. And it's okay if I change little by little things. I don't pretend myself to be an atomic bomb. Yeah. <laughs> so it's good. Yeah, but this is why I find important that we all agreed on doing the performance outside Sofia because uh, doing art in open spaces in different cities in Bulgaria is also a key to open up art to be accessible for the public. Yeah, because art in a way is a way... It, 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 It's a behavior, art, has a behavior that people uh, think it's only for artists to have. Or only for educated people, Or which is not true. Pe- which is not true. You see so many like, maybe, I don't know, I don't like to even say uneducated because educated is actually sometimes more ignorant than because they have uh, that, uh, ah, yeah, I have a degree, I have a master, I have a PhD, but actually so much ignorant sometimes when you talk like that. I met the wisest people. You yeah, don't need naturally. you don't need to know how to talk. You don't need to know nothing. If you are a good human and you understand that you are the most clever person in the world and beyond the degree. Here it comes the connection okay. again with nature, with uh, who you are and etc. That's which I knowledge. think is important. What is yeah. knowledge? True, is yeah, it knowing knowledge. names and dates and uh, We uh, we don't really feel it, but the knowledge is within us through the cells. Like our bodies are mm. carrying way too much knowledge than we can accept in our minds because this been in like you know uh, building up in centuries. Like our pre-ancestors like, are bringing this knowledge. I want to bring to the table this thing, which is realization, because contemplation. This is Paul Klee, he said, uh, contemplation is revelation. And realization is something that you go like, you all your life you thought that way. All of a sudden you go like, what? Actually, you open up the openness. Mm. And you can open in so many degrees that we have no idea yet. And uh, imagine that day where we really open up. Imagine breathing without lungs, expanding to everywhere, your breath, <sighs> infinite breathing, that's freedom, that's a liberation. Liberation is not liberation. It's like liberate yourself from your body, but you can still do it in this life as a crazy dancer, mm-hmm. as a flexible fire. This is what I like to try to achieve for myself and to let people feel too. Mm-hmm. And I really hope that with the next performance that you're doing in Sofia this time, we'll really get the chance to see this in the audience. I'm curious how it will be perceived. The performance is called Lend and Lend. Yes. Because it refers to a new land created here in Bulgaria, in the frames of Bulgaria, but it's the beginning of something new coming. And it's related to the political change coming, let's hope it mm-hmm. is, because, yes. you know, this is how it is presented to the society. Therefore, they were choose. But um, it's... Uh, In my opinion, this is how I feel as a young person living here, that is high time for us to take action, to take things in our hands and start, you know, doing it the right way. So, like, we've seen corruption in many levels, but it's not a matter of somebody coming and take off the corruption and it's over, but mm. it's 
changing our minds of how we want to approach things in life. And it's not like, oh, I know somebody, let me call him, he will help me with like blah, blah. You know, this is something that we need to cut off on a personal level of how we approach our jobs, our, uh, you know, um, daily routines and, you know, how we want to sneak out to uh, like certain levels of access, maybe. So, yeah, this is uh, something we shared together with you on in our first video talks with you. And you came up with this crazy idea. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what will come up. I really don't want to review more mm. around it because it's still in process of making. Yes. But it comes on the 28th of April. And um, we're lucky that we're having you in springtime because otherwise this won't be possible. Yes, and 2022 it sounds like a year of <clears throat> transformation in the good and the bad. But uh, it's time because communication is getting faster. People can communicate all around the world. There is a lot of fake stuff, and but still information is fast, is uh, borderless. And what I think we're not really good at is catching up with the space. Therefore, we are, you know, doubting in which should we believe. But if we fasten up the way we are developing and, you know, opening up our minds, then we can recognize easily which is true and which is fake. Yeah, okay. Information is one thing and communication is another. If we communicate to each other from different parts of the world, that's what we need. Information... You know, at least you can give me the right information from around, uh, information that is on the internet is something else. But still, you can see that there is so much bad in the internet. As there is so much bad in the in the life. Someone wants your money, you will try also on the internet. Or there's bad and good. I think the 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 key is communicating. Now that we, what I was trying to say is that um, because now we can communicate so fast, we can reach to some uh, knowledge more fast in different parts of the world and we can network, connect and reveal the truth. Now the truth is coming more, more and more and more in surface. You can't hide it anymore. Before it was the media, you had just a few channels to watch in TV. That, but now you have like people, real people having These their own are channel. Source of information. Source of information. There is a lot of crap because there is. But, but among crap, there is good stuff and uh, and fun. Okay, now I'm jumping the topic. But fun is also a very good thing to to do in life. Like fun, having fun, having fun and play is very important. It's having fun is like uh, having fun doesn't mean having fun with someone. It's like having joy, having joy and together, joy together. This is what matters. Like you're uh, reminding me to jump back on something we mentioned, and it's about people that do not understand what you're doing mm. and they don't like it. Yes. And this is like with the differences between people. Mm. I don't understand, like I don't like who you are because I don't understand you. Mm. The same with the art, with the action you're doing. But still, I like the way you really represent the concepts around your actions. Like it's not... Um, matter of surprise and to leave the audience with an open topic of they, they can perceive your art the way they decide. There is still openness of understanding, but on the other hand, you really give them a solid ground. To create a crack, you need like a solid ground. Yes. And then it depends on them how they how will open the crack. Like if they will close it or maybe they will open it more. Well done. And, uh, you know, uh, when I was a younger artist, I felt criticism very touching and uh, painful. But it's all right. It's, it's all right, right because it's fear. It's fear of the unknown. It's fear of the new. It's fear of something that uh, you'd never seen. You go like, pa. Because I, I work with icons, not just in my paintings or sculpture even in my performance. I bring new icons in the world. It's okay. 
so a new vibrational level that people didn't feel, which can be weird. And that weirdness is what people don't like. It's weird. Uh, and also people don't like people who behave like... Uh, unfamiliar. Unfamiliar. Yeah. But, uh, you know, even when I perform, I'm very serious. But people laugh <laughs> sometimes. For example, with the ice cream. I hear it. I feel it. I like it. And I dislike it. I have both feelings. Because I like to have people to have joy. But I also want people to understand how serious it is to be happy, to be joyful, to be connected. It's very serious. But in order to do that, we need to be joyful with each other. So the laugh is good, but I want, with that laugh, I want them to open up. So yeah, let's have fun, but conscious is respectful. Mm -hmm. So that laugh has to be respectful. So I can hear respectful love, I like. Uh, taking the peace love, it doesn't exist when I perform. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I like that. I, I never really looked at it that way, but when you put it in words, it makes so much sense to me. Words are uh, very dangerous, but uh, it's good when we are uh, able to communicate. Many times I'm not. Sometimes I, I can, like now maybe. I have something else for you. Because, uh, you know, creating art in Bulgaria is almost always related to educate audience in a way. Mm. Because here, like many of the new waves type of art, no matter if it's in terms of visual art, performance art, contemporary dance, or some other sphere of art, they, uh, it's almost always new to the audience and a huge percent of it is not like I use educated because like this is kind of like terms educating audience blah blah but it's uh, you know people understanding what you're doing and it's a, a matter of building up through the years when they see the like, variety of things happening. And therefore, like I really want to hear your experience because you work all over the world and you've seen really different type of audiences. And how do you approach this type of learning and perceiving? From the other? Yes. You know, I always believe like uh, the role I've chosen I've chosen and I felt it's stronger than me. It's not that I've chosen. It's a, a tricky one because we are uh, privileged on one hand. But when you go and you are hungry, you go and have food, they are cooking for you. Maybe the old lady who always been cooking. And then you shit in the toilet. Uh, you you flush it. It's, I don't like the system, but anyway... Then it breaks. Then there is someone who come and fix the toilet for you. This man has been learning to fix the toilet. So people around the privilege clean your ass and you are doing your life, uh, opening, trying to open up people. That's a tricky one uh, because I understand. I I'm very respectful for the audience. Let's call them like that. They are not prepared for art because they are the one who support us. Mm -hmm. Without them, what? You can be an artist? But it's not about artists. Artists anyway is a life operator. Mm -hmm. You can be a chef and be an artist. It depends how much you open up people. Chef open up people with a great uh, taste. And uh, even uh, the one who fixes the toilet can be an artist in his way. It's about how he behaves in life. It's all about behavior. Art is not about the drawing anymore. There's some people who draw, they are not artists. They are executors. Mm -hmm. It's not about drawing. There is an expanded idea of art now. Art is God. It's God coming on earth and opening up people. That's how I see it. So you're channeling. I'm channeling that thing with you. Yesterday we were tired, not just because the previous work, it's also because the energy before the performance to create... We, f we felt it. It's not just uh, the artist. And the people also create the vibe in the performance. That's why I wanted to be amongst people. 
that energy that I bring there is not just me bringing there. I take it in too. I take in what's around me too. So we become one organism. Mm. It's about organism. We are talking about biology, physics. We are talking about something more. But it's exchanging energy. No? It's exchanging. So yes, so the short answer is educating audience is exchanging energy with it. With uneducated and educated. It uh, doesn't matter. Yeah, but I think that people could be always educated more, you know, because this is like... If we change the word education with openness, it's the same. Mm. So you cannot be always more open mm. in a way. I like what you said, exchange. Exchange is the right word because we learn from each other. Mm -hmm. So it's constant. Even sometimes we forget about the real, what really matters. Sometimes we remember, sometimes we forget. And we go through life many days with having forgotten what really matters. Yeah. Wow. I think that this is a really good way of wrapping it up, the conversation. Thank you so much for letting me connect strongly with you now in this conversation to reach the point of, you know... Thank you for being this. receptive and for making me feel comfortable about talking about this stuff, you know, and because... It's not even me, it comes through me. It's a flow. Yeah, it's a flow.